he said when Marcus got there, he had like a little bit of life left in him. And uh, all he said is they done everything they could do, you know, but um, he just didn't make it. That's a gunshot wound to the chest. That's what the, um, the death certificate says. I didn't leave there until I seen for myself that it was him. Because I thought it might might have been a mistake. Sitting on the, like on the bench, he was putting his cleats on. And I was putting my cleats on, I was getting ready to go out. He was like, man, if I don't make it, you got to make it. And I didn't really think nothing of it. Then... You talking about living in your own skin? Uh, he, he lived in shoulder pads, and you know, he just he made it look effortless. He um, it was like he was born on a football field, you know. Uh, and you only have a couple of those kind of kids. They just they don't hit a weight, you know. They don't they don't work in the off season super super hard. They just have that natural ability, and that's you know Marcus had, and it was just fun to watch. I mean. Uh, he made plays that he made plays look easy that that weren't easy. You know, he made people miss that had no business missing. Um, he took a play that a botch play and made it look like it's what we meant to do. Those are the type of things that you just you don't coach. You just sit back and you know smile and, and shake your head and say, man, I can't believe he's doing that. We talked about it all the time. He always say, man, I wish I, man, I wish my daddy would. See me play like this, man. He'd be he'd be so happy if he seen me play like this. And I wish he was here for this or that. And you could tell it affected him, because in middle school, kind of was kind of rocky for him. And that was always his big thing. Man, my daddy ain't around. He would say that, man. And then you could tell it was getting to him. So I knew that was a big deal for him. Nobody's gonna sugarcoat Marcus' experience in high school. Um, you know, he had some ups and downs, and. But by his senior year, you know, he had kind of gotten it together, and he said, "I want to graduate. I want to play football. I want to, you know, try to pursue this beyond high school." And that, that, that was like a, a kid in a candy store when it came to football, man. He was, he was very, very into it. I mean, I, and it really it helped him. It helped him in a whole lot. Um, being on that field, you know, you could run that ball and run some of that frustration out, putting it all behind you, just. Running, you know, I, if I had to take a wild guess, I would think every time Marcus had a ball, ball in his hand, he was running towards his goal. He was running towards his future. When he was here, it was never this quiet. So I'm not used to this being like this so quiet. The streets are like tumbleweeds and flying by, stuff like that, like dry. It's never been like this. So. Yeah, it's different. So when that bell rings, they're they're loud, they're excited, they're talking, they're walking through the halls, they're you know doing what kids do every day, and, and you kind of get that you know that that loud din of voices just you know, all over the place. Well, that Monday it was dead silent. I mean, nobody talked. Um, teachers weren't talking, kids weren't talking. I mean, the bell rang and it was I mean it was quiet throughout the school. Um, it, it was like getting punched in the gut. You, know, you couldn't breathe. Um, it was definitely a definitely a, a troubling day. I don't know when the healing process starts. I really don't. I don't think I really don't think it is a such thing as a healing process without works. I, I really think that the community has to surround themselves not with just this family, but any other family that has been. Um, um, devastated you know lost someone to uh violence and the gunshots or it just any kind of violence i think it's i think the healing process it'll forever linger on if we don't do anything about it i've made a lot of mistakes in my life and um uh, i've had to be forgiven a lot of times and um I would say they're forgiven, but I would say I hope their conscience eats them up and they can't rest like I can't rest until they're punished. You don't, you don't have to, to have a gun to, to prove you're a man. You don't have to you know, do these things to prove you're tough. I hope that's where our kids get, get from this situation. It's such a final act you know, to, to pull a gun on somebody, to, 
to end their life um, that way. It, it's so final, um, and, and they're too young to, to to do the you know to have that mentality, to have that thought. Are you confident that the detectives are going to be able to close this case? I am. I'd like to say yeah, but I'm not. I am. What makes you confident? Because I just believe that when the Lord promises something, He delivers, and He promised me that.